What's up guys, welcome back. This is the second video of the Google Scraper series where we're going to be scraping some results from google.com. In the first video, we had seen the diagram on how we're going to approach this project. And in the second video, now we'll start writing the code. And as you can see, you can see my terminal on your screen right now. If you're on uh, Mac and using terminal or if you're on uh, Windows using PowerShell, if you're on uh, Ubuntu using terminal, doesn't matter. The commands will be the same here. So I'm going to CD into the directory where I store all my Golang code. So in my case, it is Go code. And here I'm going to create a directory for the new project. I'm going to call it scraper for Google. And I'm going to CD into this scraper for Google. And here I'm going to uh, init this project, right? So how do I initialize this project? I create a go mod file. The go mod file, if you're new to Golang, it's very similar to uh, the package.json file if you're from a JavaScript background. Okay, so it basically uh, contains a list of all the projects or the dependencies that you're going to use. Uh, in your project, all right. So go mod edit. I need, I'll say github.com slash akil slash scraper for Google. Now I'm using a, a github.com link because uh, this is just a best practice. You're going to basically have this as the absolute root uh, for which which you'll be able to use for relative routing inside your project when you have to select other files and import other files into your project. Uh, it, it it doesn't matter for this project because for this project we only have uh, one file which is main.go so it doesn't matter. Uh, you don't have to worry about this too much but for uh, bigger projects when we'll start working with pro bigger projects this will be very very essential. So I'll say scraper for Google and it has created the go mod file for me and uh, if you uh, want me to slow down uh, uh, in, in the subsequent videos do let me know I what I've received as a feedback is people like uh, you know fast videos so that's why I talk fast and show you stuff faster so but if you want things to be slower you can comment uh, and tell me you know if you want things to be slower anyhow so <coughs> let's open our VS code so now we'll start writing the code you can start uh, you can work with any code editor but in my case I'll be using VS code all right and uh, here we'll create the main.go file. In the main.go file, as you know, the first things that we do is uh, we write our package main. And let me remove this. We write our package main and then we start importing the packages that we're going to use. Okay, so I know that I'll be using the FMP package, the format package, because I want to print out stuff onto the screen and I'll be using net slash HTTP package because we are going to make some HTTP requests in this project. We're going to use the strings package. So we work work with strings. Time package. We'll use math slash random to be able to select a random user agent. I'll explain to you what that means. Then we have the net slash URL package, and then we have our uh, the most important package, which is not an internal package. It's uh, Go Query, which will help us to work with uh, you know the things that we'll scrape from Google bio slash if you don't know what go query is uh, you can see uh, you can go take a look at my channel there's so many videos on go query and how we can build a scraper using go query okay it's, it's a very helpful library and something that's very commonly used actually so uh, now since we're going to be using go query it's going to lead to a lot of problems later on because we have not imported go query in our more go dot mod file right so what I'll do is I'll actually go back here and I'll say go get and in these uh, double quotations, I'll say github.com slash poer keto bio slash sorry bio slash go query. Okay, uh, what this will do is it will it will add uh, the dependency to this project and also create uh, an, uh, a record of it in my go mod uh, in my go mod file. It'll take a while to install this package. So it says added. So this package was added. So this is this is an external library. We have to add these external libraries to our uh, project. Otherwise, uh, you know, we'll get a lot of errors because uh, Golang won't know what this means. All right. And that's why people use github.com and the person's name because they can then uh, you know release it as a package on GitHub. That's why I also always initialize my uh, projects like this, right? Uh, you must have noticed. So that uh, later on, if you want to release it as a package, it's very easy. Other people can include your code in their projects. It saves other people's times, basically. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll create a small uh, a variable that will contain the list of all the Google domains that exist out there. So it'll be a map of type string, and string, right? 
and uh, so there will be a list here of all the Google domains and uh, I won't add this right now I'll add this in the probably this, the, the third or the fourth video of uh, this series and uh, I'll basically be copying and pasting this list right from my projects in github.com uh, I, I, I'll upload this project in github.com and you'll be able to copy it as well so before the third or fourth video I'll upload it and I'll show you in the third video how to uh, what to basically copy and paste here so it won't be an issue so just uh, define this variable and keep it uh, empty for now and now we'll also define our search results so uh, we'll define a structure a struct in Golang based on which uh, like so we want the search result from Google in a very particular uh, predictable way right and so we're going to call it search result all right and it's going to be struct it's going to have result rank so what i'm trying to uh, telling golang is that hey whenever you scrape google and whenever you get me results they need to be of uh, you know this format they have to have result rank which will be int they need to have a result url which will be type string and it needs to have result title which will be a string so that whenever I parse the result later on we'll create a parse function when we, when we pass the results from Go, uh, Google right we will take only these four different uh, values from it so this helps us to create a very structured kind of data so that when if, if we want to st uh, store it to our database we can do that right because in our database we know how to create that model now all right and then we'll have a list of our user agents so let me first create a variable here called user agents all right it'll be a slice of type string and this will create a list of uh, this will uh, sorry contain a list of all the user agents so uh, if you've seen the previous video you know that user agents are basically uh, chrome uh, you know um, how do I explain it? It's basically different type of browsers that could be there, right? Like Chrome or Mozilla, right? Uh, so those kind of uh, browsers. So that when your Golang code goes and make request to uh, Google, it knows that okay, so this is a browser that's making a request to it. So here will be a small. Here we'll put a small list of about six to seven different agents. That again, you know, we'll copy and paste in the third or the fourth, uh, uh, you know, video in the series from my GitHub account. So let's keep this empty for now. So we have kept. Google domains empty for now and user agents empty, empty for now. We don't want to write these from scratch on our own because it's a huge list and we, it's best to copy this from uh, you know somewhere. Then we'll have a function to select a random user. Okay, so we'll select random user agent. Okay, and it will it will just return a random number sorry I'm going to select a random number and it will be random dot integer percentage length of user agents so from the length of user agents which will be like seven or eight uh, you know user agents I'll select a random number okay uh, so usually you must have seen the divide by 100 if you want from 0 to 100 right if you want uh, uh, random numbers between them but we want random numbers between 1 and uh, the number of user agents that are actually there so that's why we took length of user agents I hope that makes sense and then we'll just return return user agents and the random number that we just got all right so uh, if you know how to work with arrays right so you'll you'll know that user agents uh, is this slice here and to uh, actually be able to uh, uh, access a particular value in a slice you have to pass an index so the index we're getting as a random number which we just wrote the function for okay so i hope uh, that makes sense so we'll be able to select a random user agent for each of our requests so that google knows that it's coming from a browser but from different different browsers right so uh, it won't uh, you know figure out that anything is shady anything is you know wrong with these requests so now we'll start writing our func main so in our func main we'll have result and error and we'll be calling the main function that we are yet to write it will be the google scrape function in the google scrape function we'll post our text so let's say we'll call it akhil sharma uh, Akhil Sharma is the text that I want to search on Google right and 
and then there'll be a few things more that we need to pass a few more parameters that we need to pass but we won't do that right now and if there's an error which means error is or sorry if there's no error if error is equal to is equal to nil then we'll say for response we'll range over response and we'll say fmt dot print line and we'll print the response okay so i hope that makes sense so if there uh, the error is nil then uh, that means there's no error then we're going to print out the response okay so i hope that makes sense till now so we we're going to have a google script function we have a uh, random user selection function here and uh, we we've written our func main we have defined the structure of our search result and we're going to be having a list of google domains so we're going uh, you know pretty fast and pretty okay uh, till now and what i'll do is i'll take a pause and in the next video we'll cover uh, writing these actual functions